Are you ready? Yeah. All right. It, it doesn't matter. You can just play on your phone. It's fine. Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to the Weightlifting Way of Life podcast number seven. Right, number seven. Number seven. We are talking about preparing for your first meet and oh, oh Leroy, I got a bug. Uh, and weightlifting, not powerlifting. So we're talking about weightlifting, preparing for your first meet, and I'm going to be asking questions to Bailey. We'll make sure we get him in the podcast this time. He does speak, if you guys didn't know. And uh, he's going to be the athlete. Obviously. And, and then, where are we today, CJ? Oh, we are. We are in my garage. This is the new Movement Doctor headquarters. No, this is just a uh, um, something that we just bought a house, and it's something I've always wanted. So this is my garage. And you can only see half it because the other half still has, like, uh, like the non-gym stuff in it. So, But this half is good. This half looks nice. So um, this is where a lot of training will be going down, maybe some um, – I don't know, some gains. Lots, lots of crossfittiness. Crossfitting, well, not too <laughs> Cross much. Cross I can only do, I'm putting a pull-up bar behind us, and it's going to go on the roof, so we're going to try and do chest of bars and toes of bar from that. Nice. And hey, we got a rack. Hmm? He's going to use the trees across the street as a place for his muscle-ups. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Maybe yeah. hang a rope. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> some rope climbs. Paddling rope, right. That's what we do in Right state. around the lamppost right there. Yeah. It'll be perfect. It will be. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Take a video with some sweet intro music. Yeah. And you got it like jumping, switching your feet while you're doing it. Yeah. Okay. So, again, today we're talking about preparing for your first meet. So, let's go over our topics because I'm pretty excited about our topics. So, what programming looks like preparing for your first meet? 12, 8, 4 weeks, 1 week out. Um, What the fuck is a singlet? Why do you have to wear it? And why are these crotch huggers necessary? Um, A you saw card. I can't believe they still charge money for that. (laughs) <laughs> um, openers, second attempts, third attempts, tapering. Why do I feel like shit? Weight cuts, but I want to be a 62. Uh, press outs, no reps, but it's good in CrossFit. Why can't it count here? Um, uh, no down signal, three reds, but I ended up pressing it out. It's not fair. And post meal, post meat meals. So. It's good, right? Those yeah. are good. Yeah. So I, I was very excited with these topics because I'm not a weightlifter. I'm a CrossFitter. I dabble in weightlifting in between my, my wads. In between my wads. <laughs> I like I mean, yeah. In between my wads. <laughs> um, so let's, um, let's just open it up. We've talked a ton about programming in the sport itself um, or in the podcast, I guess. So we'll kind of open up. What does programming look like preparing for an athlete's first meet? So we'll start with Ryan and uh, – you know, how many weeks out do you program? What does it like an, an initial cycle look like? Give me the down low. So, so for each athlete, you're on the three minute clock, by the way. <laughs> so for each athlete, it should be a little bit different. Uh, and, and by the way, in USAW, there's no three minute clock. It's one or two, but I know I was just saying you I'm, can't talk more than three <laughs> minutes in general. All right. So, so in, in, uh, in, in for me, it's varied by athlete, uh, different athletes are going to need different things. Um, we try to plan for each meet as far out ahead of time, right? So we just finished a meet. Our team just finished a meet a few weeks ago. Uh, we, uh, I gave them a week off, um, one of the worst decisions I've ever made. One whole uh, week? I, one whole week. We'll talk and, about that week off. Yeah, and everybody was maxing out every day, and it was uh, terrible. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I didn't max out once except for back squat. Right. So, <laughs> Which just, happened only once. Just back squat. Right, just back squat. Um, so... We, we try to plan out as far as we can. Like right now, we're preparing for a meet on June 23rd, uh, Coffee and Cleans, a meet that we're holding at our gym. And selfless plug. Selfless plug. <laughs> uh, so we'll, we'll start as far out as we can, right? So we roughly started uh, uh, nine weeks out. It was something like that. Uh, we, and then we'll, I'll basically write out a plan for each athlete, a, a base plan that'll be the same across all of our, all of our athletes, and then we'll make small adjustments for everybody as we're going through. So we'll start out looking at, at roughly that nine weeks. We'll just, this time we, we started with a, a very linear style, trying to use uh, that first six weeks, or I'm sorry, first five weeks as more of a linear base with a lot of, uh, a lot more of your higher volume stuff, with yeah. a, a lot more positioning work. We ha- it's been a long time since as a team, we've been able to uh, break down the lifts and start back with a, with a complete positioning cycle. So that's what we that's what we've been working through. Did a couple weeks of hips, a couple weeks of hangs, 
or working through some low hangs now, and then we'll begin to take things back off the floor as we're closing into those final weeks. And then we'll probably work uh, into uh, a, a small three-week cycle as we're finishing up getting ready for the meet. Okay. All right. So uh, for someone's first meet, are you doing positions like that from the hang, from the hip, uh, below the knee, position one, two, three, seven, eight? Yeah. I talked a couple weeks ago uh, about – how any new athlete with me, we we won't take a bar off the ground for a few weeks to a couple months. Okay. Yeah. Um, so so an athlete, a weightlifter to me, uh, one that's just starting into the sport, we need to work a lot from the hip, and then we need to do more from the hip, but just coming from the knee, and then we need to do more from the hip coming from the floor. Okay. Right. And <laughs> I, I always put it like that because it's it's digestible for an athlete to always get back to the same positions. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. So, Bailey, prepping – you uh, your last meet, which was, what, a month ago? Two, a month and a half ago? Yeah, something like that. That was your third or remember. second? It was my fourth meet. Fourth? Okay. Yeah. All right. So, what did your first meet look like uh, besides the shit show? No, actually, I was actually very proud of my first meet. Yeah. I will we'll, we'll that. drop some clips of Bailey's first meet in nice. right here. Um Little tiny Bailey. What did it, what did it look like? <laughs> yeah, like what did your programming look like? Do you remember? Oh, How programming. Did you feel? Um, I didn't feel that bad. I was uh, I was like, oh, this weight loading stuff's pretty easy. Not that bad. Um, I was in the uh, the sugar plums and fairies. No, uh, yeah, the, it's point. The, it's what we call the twilight phase of weightlifting, where you're just getting into it. You haven't quite learned how to lift. And all of your weights are nowhere near your actual potential, so everything feels really light. Yeah, right. and then yeah, that was. I'm uh, still there. <laughs> I haven't. I, it's only been five years. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, nobody puts a time cap on. Right? <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I was. I was thinking. I was always telling him that I was like, "Oh, this is light." No, like I didn't think it was that big of a deal. Yeah, Bailey, Bailey had a bit of a cockiness in the beginning. Oh. You can imagine. Uh, oh. Huh. Yeah, but I was very excited for the first weightlifting meet. But I had done powerlifting before, okay. so I understood the meet setting, how mm. how everything was happening. Okay. Uh, but I think I didn't understand how fast everything happened in a weightlifting meet. Right. Yeah. Powerlifting is a lot more slow pace. Um, you have a lot more time to think. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was one thing I was very happy with with going into my first meet and actually doing it. It was there was no time to think. It was kind of just sure. it all just happened, and then within like snap of the finger. The meet's over. It was over. Yeah. Like high school. Well, there's a B. So if Bailey starts to swing and punch, there's a B. It's so, it's all right. For it. <laughs> now, okay, so programming pretty much, you know, looks generally linear as we're far away from the meet, getting closer, working right. skill, hypertrophy, building strength far out, getting closer, working technical skill, increasing intensities, lowering volume, et cetera, right? Full lifts. Okay, good. Yeah. I will say when I first came into the gym, I went straight into the full lifts. How um, dare you? Because I did come in with just already having t taught myself the lifts. Right. It was just cleaning up technique, right, yeah. is what we were doing. Okay. Obviously, it's very different for an athlete that has experience versus an athlete who's never touched a barbell. Gotcha. Yeah. So now, what, how, what do you suggest for those listeners who are like, man, I want to do my first meet, but they've been doing weightlifting or CrossFit for like six days? Do they wait? Do they hop no, in their first do meet? It. Do they wink? Shush. Uh, Asking you next. Oh, bye so bye. for me, I, you know, uh, I've kind of run into a little bit of everything, right? So the person that's been doing CrossFit for a long time and, and wants to do a meet just for the experience, so it'll, you know, just for mm -hmm. the fun, or the people that've been doing CrossFit a long time want to transition into weightlifting fully. Uh, quit workouts. Right. Yeah. That's what we've deemed. Two quit. Two quit workouts. You're now deemed a weightlifter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, you know, and the, or the person that's you know, never done anything and, and wants to do weightlifting. It, it's all, it's all varied, right? So like I had somebody come to me the other day, that's one of our CrossFitters at the gym. And he said, Hey, I want to do the meet just cause I want to, I want to support the gym. And, and I, and I just want, I just want to do one. It just looks like a fun time. So I was like, cool. I'll, uh, I'll start programming a, a little bit of side stuff for you to do after your workouts, just to help build the skill of weightlifting a little mm -hmm. bit more. Uh, or, you know, somebody like Bailey who comes in and he says he wants to do full-fledged weightlifting. Uh, we're going to get him into the team programming. You know, we're going to get him started into uh, roughly what everybody else is doing. Uh, you know, or somebody who is fresh off the street will spend uh, a couple months of building the skill of weightlifting one-on-one. -on -one okay. And then we'll bring them into the full program. Gotcha. 
Billy, what do you think? Right. Right off the bat. Right, yeah. Do a, do a Ready, fire, something. aim. Yeah. Definitely. That's what I'm talking about. I think it's a little easier with powerlifting, though. It definitely is. <laughs> and, uh, though, I was um, watching a little bit less skill. Yeah. Maybe it was uh, Juggernaut and uh, Max was talking about going into the gym and like being able to powerlift next to someone that's weightlifting and powerlifting like the, you know, nothing against the sport. It's, a, you know, the, the weights they move are amazing, but the exact, the actual skill of just like squatting, deadlifting, yeah. bench pressing is much lower than snatch and clean and jerk. So being able right. to come in off the, off the street and like hop in and Maybe start it. training relatively um, normal and like a normal. It's, it's far more the sport of absolute strength. Right. With little skill or, or, or relevance right. to anything else. Or power. Um, <laughs> okay. So next, uh, anything else on that? Sort of answer the question, I guess. What does programming look like? Big volume, yeah. high intensity. So next, not to cut you off. Yes. We are going, what the fuck is a singlet? Why do we wear these crotch huggers? Because I think they suck. Let's get Bailey's take on it first. Bailey, what do you think? Do you, like, you, you look like someone who like, would just walk around in your singlet all the time. <laughs> Bailey um, wears it every chance it gets. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so keep him out six, of it. Six a.m. Why are you wearing this? Because um, it's cold outside. <laughs> <laughs> um, the first time I saw a singlet was in powerlifting. Uh, I th- I really thought it was the weirdest thing in the world. I really did. Um, but by the time I got to my senior year of uh, powerlifting in high school, I thought they were awesome. I was completely fine with wearing them. I was the only person on the team that wouldn't wear a shirt under his singlet mm. uh and my, my coach hated it he was he was like no we're all we all wearing shirts we're not uh we're not wrestlemania uh, people around here <laughs> but i was the only one who uh, would wear a shirt and i i i'm fine with singlets now you know what's really funny in uh, in high school weightlifting here uh obviously you you have to wear uh singlets on the platform but athletes or you'll see most of these kids you know young boys being self-conscious young sure. boys every single one of them is wearing shorts and right before they step onto the platform they pull their shorts off yep. make their lift step off the platform put their, their shorts, shorts back, back on it's awesome oh nice. uh, we i did the same thing in powerlifting did <laughs> yeah. the same exact thing it's awesome um you know singlets i think singlets <laughs> Stop it. Yeah, it's you're going to be okay. It's going to be close. It? Uh, yes. Anyways. If it comes close enough and I got a good miss. shot. So anyway, singlets are, I, I think, are very important for the sport of weightlifting. Why? Because if you don't have singlets, you don't have uniformity on what somebody can wear, right? So it's just like a uniform in any sport, right? Football players aren't allowed to have brass knuckles because it's not part of the uniform. I like that was slightly stereotypical of like a football player and the <laughs> bad things they do. On the have field. you seen that on the field? <laughs> you see someone but pull those out? basketball players aren't allowed to wear shoulder pads, right? right? So that they can't, you okay. know, so put, you drop their shoulder. It was more like a uniform. Right. It's, it's very much a okay. uniform. And it's, uh, it's very much a way that we can regulate how the benefit somebody's getting from their equipment. Yeah. Right. So, Originally, wasn't it worn so they could show the no hip? The con- the, they could show that there was no contact in the hip? Right. Wasn't that the original reason why they wore the singlet? I, I believe that is uh, having to do with the original reason. Uh, it, but I think it goes right along with right. advantages that you could gain sure. if you had, like, so like a singlet uh, can't cover the elbows, right? You right. see nowadays, you see a lot of short sleeve singlets. Mm-hmm. They can't come close to the elbow. Right. Right. For good reason, you know, so that you yep. can't. The, your knee sleeve can't touch the bottom of the singlet. Right, you have can't to see skin. Button. Yep. Yeah. Oh, that's a rule. Yeah. Yep. Or then, like your, I don't think it's, your sock can meet the knee sleeve either, or something like that. I think the sock can meet the knee sleeve. I might be wrong. Right no, your, your sock meet the can. Singlet. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Your sock can because I think there's a couple of women lifters yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, there can has meet to the be skin sleeve. on the thigh somewhere. There does have to be a, a clear gap. Yeah. Okay. No, I um, thought uh, Rebecca Coe is the lifter I'm thinking about. Uh, she was like worn like a complete long sleeve where it goes the singlet goes all the way down but she wasn't wearing a knee sleeve though no she she yeah she has a pretty big knee sleeve so. yeah i don't okay. know we'll, we'll leave that one on the table maybe we'll leave that one open i don't know we'll maybe i'm crazy research and talk about it next time uh, maybe it depends on if it's international or if it's just like right that that might be a factor as well I, you know mm-hmm. i only know the local rules yeah um but yeah so it, i think it is important for fairness of sport 
Okay. It, it, you know, if you're wearing something big and baggy, it's uh, it's easy to get away with a lot of things. Sure. You yeah. Know, okay. You could be wearing a, a squat suit under your squat <laughs> under suit your, under your squat trench suit. coat. You know. I would uh, agree with that. Just because in powerlifting, that was a big deal. Obviously, mm-hmm. in powerlifting, you're looking at squat depth, right. looking about whether someone's hips came off the bench uh, during that deadlift. Not so much. Not really that big of a deal. Sure. Kind of just lift the weight up. But yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely a big deal for that as far as judging goes. Okay. Cool. All right. So moving on, um, the you saw card. I know it's something that I hated buying. I've renewed it twice now for the two meets that I've done. And you, you've done weightlifting. I've meets? done weightlifting meets. Wow. Yeah. Ha. Huh. Wait, you did two meets. I've done two meets. Yeah. So they were a year apart because you had to redo that. Huh? What do you mean? Oh yeah, they were like a year and a half apart, and I had to okay. renew my card both times, and, and I was pissed and both they, times. These I just weightlifting the meets didn't have a didn't have a CrossFit unsanctioned division. No, they did. Oh man. I know. I was mad. I didn't even uh, realize those things was like early on in CrossFit. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, it's, it, it hasn't been a big thing for a long time. It's the you unsanctioned know, portion, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, because it's it's really just as simple as not reporting those people to USAW right. whenever you yeah. drop your results. But it's in. good for money, right? Right. For yeah. Meat. For the meat. Well, yeah, and, and it's great involved. for it's great for the sport. Sure. It's a it's a low barrier of entry. Like I just yeah. like I just talked about the guy that has been doing CrossFit for a long time. He's mm-hmm. like, I want to do weightlifting meet. I'm like. Cool. All you gotta do is sign up. Cool. If I said you gotta go buy this sixty dollar membership, it and then might be a little bit and you have to buy a hundred dollar singlet. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so it might a be right a very okay. different thing. So uh, going into my first weightlifting meet, mm-hmm. um, I knew I had to buy a singlet. I didn't actually buy have to buy a singlet for that particular meet, but I knew in the future I would have to buy a singlet. And uh, Brandon and Patrick on the team both had the same singlet. The Adidas one cost like a hundred dollars. Um. So I was like, oh, wow, i got to pay $100 for a singlet. Don't really want that. And I was just in a thrift shop one day, looking around on the 99-cent rack, find myself a singlet. That's gross. Okay. That's, that's pretty nasty. Uh, not okay, lie. it's not nasty when it's a dollar. Okay. Oh, damn. Found it. It fit me. A dollar singlet. I still wear it. Worn it to all four of my meets. That's yeah. pretty dope. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. That's hey. pretty cool. Whatever works. Yeah. Hey, it was Adidas. It was an old school wrestling one. Uh, it's pretty good. Pretty it's like good. spaghetti straps. It's like no, spaghetti. It, oh, not, it looks pretty legit. It's a not, good looking single. Yeah, yeah, not that old school. Nice. That's cool. Yeah. All right. So, um, what do you guys think about you saw overall membership? How it's regulated? We'll quickly talk about that. Uh, you know, I think whatever supports the sport is is good. Okay. You know, I obviously not knowing the the numbers that you saw sees in terms of money mm-hmm. but knowing roughly the numbers that like uh, organization like crossfit sees in terms of money sure. i think our measly 60 dollars a year is the yeah. least we can do oh yeah for sure know? so what do you think about someone doing their first meet and saying i don't want to pay that 60 bucks or the 100 and like not supporting the sport just wanting to do the meet what do you think about that bailey that's kind of like almost like like Double dipping, maybe like you know, um, getting the benefits without having to pay your dues. I think it. I think it's fine if if your goal is to not compete in weightlifting and just do it as like accessory, just a fun okay. thing to do on the weekend. Sure. I don't see an issue with it. Um, because why pay money that you don't need to particularly spend, especially with all these people doing CrossFit divisions and stuff sure. like that. Um, it's I not like it's, you're going to do a meet that often. I think it's all supportive to the sport because I, I think it's supportive of the sport either way because. As a meat organizer, you're paying for the meat sanction, mm-hmm. right? So whether or not that person's there or not doesn't matter. I mean, you're you're, you're still supporting the sport that way just by being there, mm-hmm. um, and then you're you're supporting the sport by purchasing everything that comes with it. You know, sure. right? <clears throat> if you've bought weightlifting shoes, you've supported the sport, right? You know, does what does Usa get a piece of Adidas? No, no, kidding. but it. Yeah. I, I think it just awareness. brings more awareness yeah, to the yeah, sport. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. Okay, so let's talk openers, second attempts, third attempts. And we're talking about the first first time, first meet, okay, is this first time an uh, athlete. What do you suggest they go for their opener? I think that's a big question. Everyone's, as a first time, like, I'm going to PR. I'm going to PR all three lifts. <laughs> right? Going for it. Yeah. Send it. Yeah, opening opening up three <laughs> kilos yeah. heavier than, yeah. than uh, your best. So what do, you, uh, what do you suggest for someone doing their first meet? What do your percentages look like for their opener? Uh, that's going to be a big depends. Uh, Fuck your so, depends. <laughs> so it it it, it does depends all depends old. on <laughs> it, it does depend on what the meat is, right? Yeah. So if it's if it's a small local meat, right? If it's your first meat, if it's a state meat, if it's a national meat, 
if you know you're close to other people in your class mm-hmm. after you see the numbers after weigh in. So I, I think that's uh, that's where it all revolves around. Roughly, you know, let's say it's just just a local meet first or second or however many. It doesn't really matter. Maybe you're just trying to. Or let's just say it doesn't matter. I would say opening around 90% is never a bad idea. Okay. Or, you know, a lot, you'll hear a lot of coaches say anything you can hit for a double or a triple. You hear both of those. Mm, gotcha. Um, easily. Uh, if it's, you're, if you're trying to qualify, you need to have a pretty clear cut plan of an easy way for you to hit those qualifying mm-hmm. numbers. Uh, so, you know, uh, never uh, a bad idea or uh, a good idea is to maybe go for your opener or I'm sorry, go for your qualifying number on your second attempt. Okay. Uh, also, obviously it depends on what the athlete is capable of. Uh, if it's, if it's a state meet or, or a national meet and you're just, you know, you're there for the first time and you're just trying to uh, lift some def- decent weights, you should probably go with a similar strategy to the local meet, okay. you know, 90%. If you don't think you got a shot of breaking, you know, top three, if you do get a shot of breaking top three, well, now we now it's a game, sure. right? So, yeah. that, and this is where coaches get excited, right, right, right. You know, getting to actually play the game with other coaches, mm-hmm. getting to look at what the other athletes are doing, and then comparing that to what you can do, and then trying to put together a strategy for how you're going to beat out that other guy. Okay. Hopefully, you know, you you know you have better numbers on one of the lifts, and you can pull them into an uncomfortable position, and hopefully make them miss. Gotcha. Uh, that's that's kind of the, the the idea whenever you get to that upper level, and then okay. you know if you're if you're lifting at an upper level, uh, you know, in a state national meet, and I mean maybe even international meet, you probably need to be it, 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 games aside, you probably need to be opening. 95 percent plus sure okay bailey quickly what do you think about openers for a first timer uh, for first time uh you always got to go with something safe something that you're very okay. extremely comfortable with because it's going to be your first time on the platform um as and if you haven't done powerlifting before or anything right. like that um definitely your first time where it's just you everybody's staring at you all eyes on you so definitely got to be something where you you know 100 percent without a doubt you can hit that even if it's the worst technique you've ever had. Okay. Um, but with that aside, I'm a home run hitter. Right. Okay? Yeah, open at 105, right? Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> your, your second <laughs> attempt should be a PR. That's, That's right. You. There you go. Yeah, you know, I, I love the idea of – so if it's somebody's very first meet, I think going six for six is a good goal, okay. right? Cool. Purely confidence building. Yeah. If it's somebody's, you know, second, third, fourth local meet and they're – you know, in their, in the, if they're just lifting just because they're not trying to qualify mm-hmm. for anything, yeah, you should probably try and go for some PRs. Sure. Why not? You yeah, know, definitely. Open, Hype. you know, 92%, 97%, and then 103%. There you go. Cool. All right. All right, so next we're talking about tapering. And we're just going to ask Bailey here. So, Bailey, during the taper week, everyone always feels like shit. Do you and why do others? Oh, uh. Cause you said you feel like shit right now. Yeah, right now the weights <laughs> are at like he's in the hole right now. Yeah, in the hole. Oh, uh, the volume. Yeah. So what about the taper week? Tell me. Taper week actually doesn't feel that bad for me. Uh, at the beginning of the week feels a lot worse than towards the end of the week. Sure. Um, but I don't know. The volume's so low. It doesn't. I like I like intensity high with low volume. Mm-hmm. I think it fits me a lot more. I hate doing more than one rep. Um, Which is why you don't do CrossFit anymore, right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um. But yeah, taper doesn't always feel that bad towards like I would rather taper than anything else. Really. Okay. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, you, you know, we we taper about a week out mm-hmm. like a lot of people do and uh, we drop the volume out completely and it's all about tightening the screws at the heavy weights. Yeah. So, you know, I, I think for for our guys it's never really too bad. Okay. You know. Cool. All right. So, an athlete getting ready, they can kind of expect Maybe feel a little slow in the beginning of the week and start to feel better come Saturday meet, come Thursday, Friday, start to feel a lot better. Yeah. Not to get too concerned, right? Yeah. I mean, this the- this last meet, I had a absolutely terrible taper. Yeah. Like, I'm pretty – my Monday was – I didn't – I don't think I hit it, like, It might have had snatch. something to do with doing a CrossFit Open workout. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was after 18.3, right? right? Oh, yeah. Maybe, was, um, maybe something to 18. do with 2. that. 18.2. 18.2. Yeah, that's, 18. yeah, that was even, that's even worse. Because yeah. 18.3, you just wouldn't have got that far. 18.2, everyone got far. I don't know. I everyone got worked re- hard. I that actually got wrecked clean, by 18.3. Right? Really? Yeah. Clean, yeah, yeah. He, he did it in like seven minutes and then hit like a, like a 285 clean or 295 clean. 
Oh, uh, 18.2? Yeah. Yeah, I got 287, nice. which is actually pretty high for me. Then. It's very high. Uh, it's a very high score overall in general. It's pretty good. Pretty. It's definitely your highest open score. <laughs> that might have been his best open score. Yeah, no, oh, yeah. I, I, I know it is. Oh, no, I had to. Yeah, CJ far. made sure he checked you on the open yeah. board, but <laughs> made sure you didn't beat him or anything. He did. He smoked me in the clean. So, <laughs> I was on my open score. was so shitty this year. All right, so taper week. Everyone's going to feel a little bit different, but for the most part, at the end of the week, you should start feeling good. If not, then maybe we need to check what the taper looks like okay. overall. Okay, so next, talking about the weight cut, right? Weight cut. And who should do it, who shouldn't, and – is it important for a first-time athlete? That's all we're talking, Ryan. First-time athlete, not everyone else. Well, it depends. Oh, my God. <laughs> Put your no. diapers on. No, very first-time athlete, I, no business cutting ever, 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 okay. ever. I, I, I tell all my athletes in their first four years of weightlifting, they have no business cutting. Okay. They need to just focus oh. on getting big and strong. Four years, that's a long time. Well, that's because you're going to be a 94. Didn't we discuss this already? <laughs> yeah. Obviously. Everyone who was watching, Bailey's like a 63 right now, so he's going to be Whoa. a 94. So. I'm not that small. <laughs> Obviously can't speak in absolutes, but it's yeah. it, it's something along those lines that until we're seeing the athlete's body weight really start to flatten out, sure. uh, you know, no matter how much volume they're doing, their, their body weight doesn't seem to increase. That's whenever we'll start to figure out, okay, this is going to be your weight class and you know, if we're on a borderline, we'll cut down a little bit. Sure. Okay. What do you think? Uh, I've never had an issue with having to cut weight in powerlifting or weightlifting. I've mm -hmm. always been like four, four to five pounds underweight. Mm -hmm. um, and it's never affected me as far as like the weight I'm lifting or anything okay. like that. Um, so I've never had to deal with cutting weight. And I don't think I would ever want to. It doesn't sound Unless very it fun. was for like a big, big, big meat. Um, but this last meet, I did actually end up. I didn't even try to cut weight. Mm -hmm. It just happened. Like, just happened. I ended up being seven pounds less than what I weighed in like two weeks before. Hmm. Not enough but pancakes, huh? Not enough pancakes. Not enough he said he stopped jet. eating carbs like a week before the meet. Is I didn't. That a real I didn't. Thing? Meet, I didn't. Yeah. No. I like it wasn't on purpose. I just didn't have money. So, <laughs> how, but so if all the wait, and all what? all I had left in my house was uh, how did how did carbs leave your how did carbs leave your your food accessibility because that's pretty much the cheapest food. Okay, because I I buy all like a lot of my groceries at one time, uh -huh. uh, and there was a ton of bogos on uh, pork and chicken. Okay, so I you shop at Win Dixie, uh, Publix. Oh, okay, uh, and I got just a bunch of that, and so I stocked up a ton of it, mm -hmm. and I ran out of all this carbs. That's amazing. <laughs> What are you gonna? I don't even know what to do now. <laughs> what do you do? Oh yeah, please pause. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep going. Um, <laughs> I I just bought all I bought all my proteins, but I didn't buy it. There were no bogos on the carbs, so I didn't buy any of that. <laughs> <laughs> that was wild. That's nuts. Um, so I decided to eat like all my carbs go away first anyway, because that's just what I eat fastest. Ah. Um, and gotcha. yeah, so I just had nothing but protein left. All right. Okay, that's fair. All right. So weight cutting bad for first time meat. Yeah. Yeah, I did it for both of them. So, anyways, next subject. <laughs> really? Even what, even you just competed in. Yeah, but I was like seventy. I was like one seventy one, and I just wanted to compete at one sixty nine. So I wouldn't even oh, call okay. that a weight cut. I literally just yeah. like didn't. Did eat. you win? No, then I didn't. Why even, would you cut? Weight? I didn't even get. I'm pretty sure I got last in both meets. <laughs> Anyways, you should you should have like eaten as much as you could in the weeks leading up. Just made yourself sick every day and yeah. hit some PRs and right. been in eighty. Yeah. Got really fat and hit yeah. some yeah. PRs. Yeah. Sure. Bitch straight at the top of eighty five. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, out of nowhere, being like seventy eight. Go all the way to eighty five. Yeah. Um, okay, so. Next, we're talking someone's first meet. Um, we'll just assume this is a CrossFit athlete. And they have struggle catching the bar. They catch it every time, but there's just like this little like, ah, uh, ah, uh, one of those. Like, eh, mm -hmm. eh. Nice and soft elbows. Yeah. So what do we, what is that? Why is, why is that a thing? Why is that not illegal? Why is it not legal? Yeah. Because at some point you have to draw a line between what is a jerk or snatch and what is a uh, push press okay or a muscle snatch sure right and if there's no i think the only clear-cut line is catching the bar with locked out elbows okay 
because if not, they're where else do you draw the line? Sure. You know, I think it's I think it's that way just out of purely convenience. Mm-hmm. Okay. Really. Pure convenience. Well, I mean, I think it creates a standard. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's yeah. a standard yeah. created at that point because of convenience. Because yeah. there's nowhere else, right? I mean, where else along this line right. is would, a clear would standard? Would be a catch. Yeah. Right. I got you. What do you think? Um, I do have difficulty with the catch you and got the baby, snatch. You got baby elbows? Uh, mostly just in the snatch. Just in the snatch. Really? Yeah. Wow. Um, I bobble all the time. Mm-hmm. Do you uh, think that's because you're off balance or because you have baby elbows? What do you think? Coach? Uh, I don't know. There's a lot of speed. He's really fast under the bar. Could be a balance thing. No? Well, it's I, I definitely wouldn't say a balance thing because one thing that Bailey's learned how to do really well in the last few months Stay is – Stay down one leg. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, we do a lot of BOSU ball work. Yeah. Oh, my God. Um, That's how uh, to squat it, it, On your knees, podcast. on the BOSU ball, snatching. like uh, twirling a dumbbell overhead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then somebody's throwing a tennis ball at you, you got to catch it and throw it back. Yeah. You know, so lots of that. No. Uh, that, was a good, that, was, that was a very good, like, coach's throw. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, no, I, Bailey, has he, he just hasn't been weightlifting very long. Mm-hmm. He doesn't have a ton of stability overhead, not a lot of general overhead strength. Uh, it's just not something that we prioritize a lot in this training. Uh, so probably what we'll be doing after this meet leading into the state meet is working a lot over at stability. Yeah. I would ask you why, but I don't want to get in there right now, but I will. That's camera. a whole nother conversation. I know. Why hmm. overhead stability is not part of his training. Hmm. I don't know. That's an interesting question. All right. <laughs> because it's move a team. On. We work as a team oh together on team weaknesses. Yeah, but we've talked about individualized programming being the most important.